What's up, guys? Took the kayak set up out, and I just wasn't satisfied with what I got. So, back to the drawing board for phase two. Like I said, I have phase one. Uh, just to recap, phase one is just a fixed trolling motor and you use rudder control. Well, it took my uh, turn radius from about maybe 15 feet to, to about 50 feet. So, not cool. So, we're going to do this now. Phase two. We're going to put some eye bolts right on here, and we're going to somehow bolt it to this. So when I turn that, this should turn as well. So we kind of need some research a little bit, and it came across this one guy's, uh, one guy's post on, uh, I think it's YouTube, and he went with this kind, a similar idea, and he was using a plastic wire, basically a... Uh, Trimmer wire, and he said it's better than uh, better than metal wire. So I'll give that a shot, and I'll build that up, and we'll see what we get. So anyhow, for parts, all these things from those, trying to go with all stainless parts here. Some eye bolts, and drill it out with a, a five thirty seconds drill bit, and then it just it just goes right in. And just tighten that up so it doesn't spin and you're pretty much good on that end so um, I just have to now finish the, the green wires and I'm trying to run it through this a feral uh, thing okay so I'll, I'll do that and I'm just gonna try that out next I have high hopes for this I hope it really does perform better than what Phase one, because phase two is gonna be awesome, and maybe we'll even get to phase three too. So let's see, uh, let's see what I can do. Oh, and then this is what I do also when I'm fixing kayaks. The, the, the new the super Facebook live DD, stuff. It's technically gonna be a lot more silent, correct? Listen to John Cruz and the gonna, bait man. More that Facebook line, live. You guys are talking about crankbaits, which is something that I really like. So for the guys that can't envision what I'm doing, this is basically it. Just like that. I will have to crimp those down a little bit harder, probably with a vise. But it'll come out and I'll kind of just do something like this. Well, you'll see. Come like that. But each line on each side. And I still have to figure out how to do the back part. My brother was talking U-bolts and brackets, so I'm probably end up doing something like that. But Let's hope we get this thing running before uh, we go to uh, Kentucky Lake. I'm probably gonna probably gonna go invest in a couple more clips, just like that, and should be okay. I think we should be okay. That way, like I said, we have to we have to run it again. Hopefully, this week uh, we're going to one of the local lakes. Gonna probably be meeting up with some of the local guys, and I hope this plastic piece is gonna hold up. Because if it doesn't. Man, that's not that's gonna suck. That really was literally it's not gonna be good. Uh there was some thought between me and my brother by of building a reinforcement plate. So depending on how day one goes, we might have to do something like that. So that's it for tonight. That's it for tonight. See ya. Okay, I lied. One more thing before we call it a night. Uh I Remember telling you guys I was going to install this? This is the troll motor connector kit. Uh, I was going to put it here between the battery and the fuse. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, this right now it's hardwired in, so I can't pull the battery out. But uh, once in a while, I would like to move the battery to, uh, to the boat, which is something I'm going to do this weekend also. I have a little buddy tournament, and I'm going to try to run this uh, battery on the boat and see how it goes. But in order to do that, you have to have uh, just quick disconnects. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Okay, I just want to go over uh, the connector uh, kit here. Okay, so basically what you get is you get two connectors and some really, really aggressive 8-gauge uh, wire. And you get the plug, the plug that I uh, actually have installed over here for the troll motor. And some miscellaneous uh, mounting screws here. So basically, what I'll do, what I plan to do, is I'll plan 
use this mounting bracket and I'll clip it onto this and I'll mount it underneath here so then I just come out like that and it goes right in. That's the plan. That's what I plan to do. It's actually a really good kit. I highly recommend it. I'm not, you know, sponsored by any of these guys or anything like that, but I like to tell people about good products when I see them because there's too much of uh there's too much stuff out there right now that I think uh is getting confusing. Okay, so um I like this and I, I recommend it, okay? Check it out, this is what you do when you ain't got a nice pair of clippers. You use a mow knife, I mean kitchen knife in this case. Cut it like right here. This is not recommended, but when things happen, things happen. Snip it here. I'll snip it here. I'll snip it here. Basically, that's that's pretty much not going to be used anymore. I'll use it on something else. And right now, we're going to go. Well, actually, that's going to still be used because that has to go to this, and then this will be on that end. So we could do that. Is another reason why women live longer than men. I really should be doing this like a hot air gun, but I ain't got one. Use the next best thing, which is a propane torch. Of course, I've done this many times before, but just in case you guys, you know, need alternative methods of doing this. This is a good way. All you need is a heat source. It'll it'll uh, shrink the heat wrap. Okay, cool. Everybody cool with that? Well, at least I hope everybody's cool with that. All right, cool. That should work. That should work. All right, cool. I got the other one done. I'll seal it too. And we should be all done for the night. That's a little too hot. There we go. I just want to see a little triangle come out of it. Should be hot enough. Hmm. All right. It's a little strong there. Yep. That was my mom talking about milk that's been in the fridge for two months. Not cool. Not very cool. And yeah, let's test it out. Give me one second. Make sure everything's so good. Alright, so finished product. Connector goes in. One way only. Goes in like that. Flip the switch. Everything still sounds good. Let's go turn on the uh, motor. Let's just check power to the motor. Make sure we got power. Press the button. We're good to go. Crank it up. Mats. You can see that the motor is running real fast. Call it good. Call it good for the night. 
call it gift for the night. That was a big accomplishment. Uh, there's a couple little things I had to do, but that means got to run back to like Lowe's or Home Depot, and it's already late, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take the battery out. This is one of the reasons why I, why I want to do this. Put a detent. Pull the battery out. Did you guys see that? Do that again. That's just pretty cool. So, so everything's like that. The only reason why I want to do this because I do take the batteries inside just to uh, charge and if I'm traveling then I don't want to uh, leave it in the kayak because it's a fairly expensive battery. Somebody could just, you know, come by and take a nice battery. So what I would do is I'll reach in here, pop the fuse, not that you have to, but you can do that, pull that down, pull this out, bring the battery with you indoors and uh, go ahead and charge it. So that's what we're going to do. Take it inside. I'm gonna charge it in the uh, with a new charger I just bought, and this is something that uh, I emailed the people, and they're like, "Yeah, you gotta have a like lithium specific charger." So we're gonna do that. Here's the other thing that's pretty cool about this is uh, you got this protector on it, so that way uh, you don't actually short that out and cause this battery to melt down. So that's a big plus. Let me show you the charger mix. Yeah, this is like my battery charging corner. I got an AGM battery, a lithium battery, a conventional battery, and another AGM battery. This is the battery that I've been running for a while now. It's probably the best one for the buck you can get. It's a sealed lead acid AGM uh, battery. Uh, I'm definitely gonna say that's probably the best one for the for the kayaks because it's it's 18 amp hours and it's only 30 bucks shipped to the old dog oh, from eBay. No, from uh, yeah, yeah, from eBay. Yep, you might be you might find it on Amazon too. I'll I'll try to shoot you guys a link. That's my car battery from my project car that still never started up. That's the Battleborn battery and. This is the Group 29 from uh, Walmart for my Stella, and the sucker was heavy as f It's probably like 80 pounds. Just gonna get replaced by this one, 17 pounds. And this is the battery charger I've been using. I'm actually kind of testing it out, but currently that's what we're using, and currently no complaints about it. Retails for about 100. And I don't know what the retail value is, but it's actually about, uh, I think I paid a hundred bucks for it. I'll shoot you guys a link, so check out the de descriptions for that. Uh, they should be available on Amazon or eBay, whatever you prefer. I tend to be more of an eBayer, so. That's what I'm doing, that's what I'm charging, and that's what they recommend. That's what Battleborn recommended too, so. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I'm going with. We'll see. And it can, this one charger can charge all the types of batteries, so that's one of the cool things. And it's also got a recovery mode and a jump start mode, which uh, I don't recommend you doing, but they say you can, but we'll see. Uh, so far, we ran the battery for about an hour, and as you can see, I just threw it on the charger, and we're, we're the way the charger works is that is, uh, it tests the battery for 25%, 50 75 and then it'll go up to 100 if it needs to, but... I ran it for about, an, uh, not even an hour, maybe maybe full power for about 15-20 minutes on the 55 pound thrust and so far it is still, looks like it's still around or above uh, 70%. So let me see, give you guys a close up of that so you can see that. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool, uh, a little battery charger. 72 hours later. It's Connery again. Uh, today I'm gonna be, well, I already did it, but I'm just gonna wanna show you guys what I've done. So maybe if you guys are trying to do something like that or something similar, um, you'll have some of my, my thoughts on it. Uh, you guys know about the trolling motor setup that uh, we took out to the lake, and I told you guys that the uh, turn radius was horrible. Well, I've come back and I've rigged up something else, and this is kind of phase two. And what, about what I mean by phase two is uh, we're gonna basically Use the built-in steering system to turn and steer the uh, control motor. It's kind of phase two, and this is only this is very specific just to the pro anglers. I believe maybe the compass. I'm not sure. Maybe some of the other ones, but primarily the pro angler platform. Um, essentially, what you do is you're going to steer with the built-in steering system here, 
which it will turn your rudder control, which in turn will turn the motor. Okay. So there you go. Shows you the angle, how aggressive an angle you can get. So it's full range, four inch air, four inch there. Uh, I haven't, I haven't finalized it yet. Now I'm, st I'm trying to use. Uh, I read somewhere where some guy was using these uh, a weed whacker wire. He said he, he really recommends it over the steel stuff because it doesn't rust out. So I'm trying to go with that for now, and it's pretty cheap. It's only three bucks for like two hundred something yards, I think, or hundred yards. Uh, so I did that. I got some clips for di quick disconnect because I know that uh, most of our uh, Oklahoma tournaments they're not going to allow kayak trolling motors. So it allowed me to quick disconnect this whole system. Or if I want to just store it, I can quick disconnect everything and I'll store it inside. So essentially what happens is when the steering system, the built-in rudder uh, steers, your uh, your motor will steer too. I'm just kind of show you guys that how it works. So from an angle, let's do this, do this, we're straight from the back. Yep. Yeah. Just does that. So that's pretty cool. Can't wait to try it out. The only my only concern is um, the only concern I have is I don't I'm not sure if the torque on the engine is gonna break any of the steering stuff because it is held on with a pretty small uh, line. So I'm have to upgrade that. It's something that I'm looking at, looking for. I haven't seen anything up up online yet on how people have upgraded. I know they've replaced it, but I haven't seen any major upgrades. So on top of that, this is the camera setup that I'll be running this year. To bring you guys some better footage. Okay. We're running an external mic. Just kind of zip tied here for now. But I'm going to build a bracket on it. That way uh, we keep the noise down to a minimum. And this is the road mic for the external mic. This is actually what's on this camera right now. I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with it for, for a non-powered microphone. So that's where we're going to be running. And this camera is actually going to be powered via USB, which is uh, just not long enough at the moment because I'm going to power it off my uh, my built-in USB port right there. So I need maybe another three feet. Three feet would be all right. So that's kind of the update right now. I have to finalize the design over there, and I have to finalize this. I have to order some more uh, cables. Uh, maybe looking at some building a bracket for this microphone, like I said. And after that, we should be all right. We should be uh, ready to go for some awesome adventures. And we'll try to record as much as we can. And that's what we've been doing this year. And I hope you guys stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoy the adventures that we bring you guys. Whether that be tournament, pre-practice, hybrid smashing, striper smashing, or just straight out on the river trying to catch, I don't know, guppies. Because <laughs> we'll do that too. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for tonight. Pretty burned out from the weekend. We went fishing and pretty much learned about the chatterbait. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about anything, anything here you want to know about. Uh, yeah, let's show the close-up of this. It's something that a lot of people don't do online. Basically, it's just a square aluminum tube, uh, U bolt system, and then I have just another uh, quick and dirty uh, eye bolt system that I drill through and you can put it on the side. All this is going to be locked tight and later. And I'm trying to keep it all as stainless steel as much as possible so it won't corrode. But uh, most of it will get painted. That's the setup. And that's the setup. Same eye bolts used here as used here. Oh, guys, I'll show you guys the uh, Lowe's part numbers. Maybe where you can find online. Maybe on Amazon or something like that. But once again, uh, that's it. That's all I got for today. See you next time.